This is lesson four in our InDesign tutorials. In this one lesson we're going to look at some advanced character formatting and how to use character style sheets. Let's start by zooming in on our text. Um, I'm going to start out by applying a character style to my text and the way character styles work uh, is that they apply styles to phrases or words. Now that's compared to a paragraph style. I've, here's the paragraph style menu. If I click, put my cursor in a paragraph and click on a paragraph style, the entire paragraph changes to that style. If I want just a phrase or word, then I need to use a character style. So let's see how that works. Let's say I want to use a bold emphasis here and I want to use a different font. I can, on my character formatting panel up here, change my font. I'm going to use Gil Sands and we'll make it bold. Look how big that looks on the line here compared to the Garamond, which has a much smaller X height. So all I'm, going, I'm going to reduce that a point, make it much more comfortable. And once I've got that done, I can go to my character styles panel and new character style and I'll call this uh, bold gill uh, nine point okay and I can apply that style and if I want any word or phrase in my uh, document to be bold gill sans nine point I just select it and click on the character style now character styles cannot be removed that formatting cannot be removed any other way than by going to the character styles palette and clicking on none. So remember that if you have trouble uh, deselecting, getting rid of that special formatting, you have to select the text and then click on none to get rid of it. Let's look at another uh, character style we can make. I'm going to make a dingbat and a dingbat is made with a font that instead of producing letters produces shapes and uh, little tokens and so forth. I'll start by typing a letter. I'm going to type the letter N and I'll select that and change my font on the character uh, panel up here to Zap Dingbats. Now there's several other Dingbat fonts you can use but I'm using Zap Dingbats. Notice that that comes in big, heavy, black square, and I may not want that. Uh, I want, may want something more subtle. So again, I can go up to my character formatting palette and reduce that. I'm going to reduce it to 8 point. You notice now that it's sitting down low on the type here. If I want to center it, I can select my text, and on the character panel, use something called baseline shift. Notice if I roll over any of these it tells me what that particular window will do. And I'm going to shift this up one point. I could shift it up more. I could shift it up as much as I want, but I'm going to just shift it up one point. And it's still pretty black, so I'm going to go to my color panel. Notice that I'm working with my type fill here. And I'm going to reduce this down to about 50% like so. And now I have this nice subtle gray bullet. I'll select it. I'll go to my character styles to new character style and I'll call this bullet square 50% like so. And again anywhere I want to apply that I can select some type and click but, but note that with a, a dingbat font, the letter you choose will produce different shapes. And so you want to know what letter produces the shape you want. You can see that right there. Okay, let's make a bulleted list. I'm going to select these three short paragraphs. I'll go up to my type menu to bulleted and numbered lists to apply bullets. You see I get these funky bullets with this odd spacing. So I'm going to uh, change that. The first thing I'll do is go up to my uh, character formatting panel to this little pull-down menu over here 
and I'll choose bullets and numbering and I'll add a dingbat I'll do that by just clicking on the add button I'll make this zap dingbats and I'll select my square dingbat and now you see we get those big black dingbats now I want it to be like my my gray dingbat here and the way I do that, it's real easy, is I just select my character style for that right here. Now we have our nice dingbats. You'll notice that the spacing is real odd, and we can adjust that too. Left indent is the distance from the edge of the column to the text, and then our first line indent, notice it's a minus number, brings that back a pike and a half. I'm going to tighten this up. I'll make this two pikas, and I'll make this one pika, and there we have our nice, neat uh, spacing for our list. We'll click OK. Now let's go to our paragraph styles, because this is a paragraph style, bullets and numbering. We'll add new paragraph style, bulleted list, and now wherever we want to apply that in our document, we can do so. We choose these two paragraphs, we click bulleted list, and there we go. The very powerful tool. I want to show you one more thing. Remember we put a rule under our subhead. Let's uh, experiment with that a bit more. The paragraph rules again can be found up here in this little pull down menu on the paragraph uh, or the uh, character formatting palette right here and it allows us to apply rules above and below. When we apply a rule, it always starts on the baseline and we adjust it using offset, like so. Get the spacing we want. Okay, and then we can adjust the width of the rule. We always want something more subtle than one point, either a half point or a, ha a hairline point, quarter point, like so. Okay, and for print we can go pretty fine with our rules. I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to go to the rule below. And notice we have the same rule here, half point. We can do some things with this though. We can, for in instance, we can change our offset of course, get the spacing we want. We can change the width of the rule to match our text. And that can be useful in some circumstances. We also can indent, and so on the left indent here I'll put three pikas, and on the right indent I'll put three pikas, and they end up with something like this. I'll click OK. Now this is would be useful if I centered my text, and now I'd have this neat little cutoff underneath it, and I could apply that anywhere I wanted to. Uh, notice my subhead now is style has changed so I'll go up here to redefine style and now if I want a subhead uh, somewhere else in the document right here I can apply that style and it will give me this okay so that's it and uh, uh, if we have future, future lessons, we'll be looking at uh, some other refinements and uh, features of InDesign.